Hello everyone, you've been requesting this video for a while, so here I am sharing my complete workflow. And here are the timestamps. I believe this video will be especially helpful for those of you who are looking to hire a designer to create an animated video. While the process may vary from designer to designer, the big picture remains fairly similar. No designer animates before they illustrate, it just doesn't work this way. And for any beginner designer out there feeling overwhelmed, lost, or unsure of how to execute a motion design project, don't worry, all you need is a clear logical plan of action and you'll be good to go. Following a plan also helps to minimize the number of revisions needed along the way. That said, please take everything I say with a pinch of salt, I'm sharing my personal experience, so take what works for you and ignore the rest. I typically step into the project once the script and voiceover are already completed, although I sometimes offer consulting on how to adapt the script for a visual language. If you're working with a studio or agency, they likely have an in-house copywriter and a team of voice actors they collaborate on a regular basis. However, solo designers usually don't specialize in copywriting or voice acting. So that's something to keep in mind. If your video will be narration driven, it's a good idea to handle the voiceover in advance, perhaps by outsourcing it to a professional in the field. Having the voiceover beforehand also helps me to evaluate the scope of work and the cost, as the length of the video is closely tied to the length of the voiceover. They are pretty much the same. Additionally, the purpose of the video, which is usually evident from the script, will influence the style, complexity and pacing of the animation. For instance, is the video meant to generate leads, educate employees, or just raise awareness. Each objective will require a different approach. The preliminary step usually involves gathering all the visual assets from the client, ideally brand guidelines. If they don't exist, then, well, anything will help. Fonts, logo in vector format, or any visual materials the company has published online or offline. I also typically review the website to get a sense of what the brand looks and feels like. Since most of my clients find me through my videos, they already have a good idea of what to expect from my work. Typically, they're looking for a clean, geometric animation based on metaphors, graphs and schemes rather than literal characters, because this is what I specialize in. If you're unsure what kind of video you need and the portfolio you're looking at showcases a great variety of different styles, it's a good idea to discuss the style at this point. Will it be typography-based video, isometric, 2D, 3D design? <laughs> what are we talking about? Will it be heavy on characters? So we're looking for someone who specializes in character design and animation, right? So agree on some references or even develop a mood board. The first thing I do when starting the project is study the script. I break it down into logical chapters and then divide those chapters even further into small fragments, usually three to six seconds long. This is one of the main reasons why the voiceover is necessary up front. Different voice actors will have different reading speed and we synchronize animation to the audio wave, not the other way around. I keep things simple by using a good old Excel file where I organize the script into scenes and then I dive into ideation phase, which is very creative and my favorite. Here I brainstorm ideas and metaphors, making rough sketches for each scene. Nothing artsy schmartsy, just enough, just sufficient to get my point across. I usually add a column with a brief description of what happens in each scene. Once the ideas are finalized, I create a few sample style frames to establish the overall style of the video based on what? On brand guidelines. Simply put, a style frame is an illustration that later will be animated. Once the style is confirmed and I get a green light from the client, I move forward by illustrating the rest of the frames. Easy peasy. A good storyboard follows certain rules as well. Um, like contrast in tempo, scale, color and complexity. But it's a big topic, actually. Maybe I should make another video about it if you want me to. Currently, I'm working on a PDF guide where I cover all these steps and also other steps that are not included in the video due to time constraints. 
uh, it should be out this fall, I hope, or this year. <laughs> so stay tuned if you're interested. The next step is creating an animatic. It's this sausage where I put all the style frames together in sync with the voiceover. No animation yet, it's just a slideshow. The animatic helps in choosing background music also, and kind of seeing the pace of the animation and overall mood. And finally, the animation itself. At this stage, everything has been discussed so many times. You've gone through so many intermediate steps, agreeing on the style, brainstorming, sketching, approving sample style frames, uh, completing the storyboard, reviewing the animatic. At this point, there is almost no chance of things going wrong. As you can see, animation is one of the last steps and is definitely not the most time consuming. It's not the biggest because planning is the key and it's huge. Meticulous and detailed planning saves you tons of time and also significantly reduces the number of revisions. I typically offer two rounds of revisions at each step and only move forward once the previous step is approved. Uh, this way, we avoid situations where style frames suddenly need to be changed after the entire video is animated because we finalized each step along the way. So the very final step is adding music and sound effects and delivering the video in the required format. So this is my workflow, guys. I hope it clears things up a little and it was helpful to you. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if it was, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.